today I'm going to look at one of the worst multimeters I have seen ever. It's a Sentec. These things are everywhere on eBay. Um, usually around five bucks, if not less. I've seen them sell for a lot less. You could actually win one of these on eBay's for like two ninety nine, and it is a seven function multimeter with automatic zero adjust and a bunch of other bullshit features. And who makes it? Well, who distributes it? None other than Harbor Freight. Uh, well, inside. Ooh, it's got a model number. The 69096. Uh, save this manual. You will need this manual for the safety warnings and precautions. Uh, I'd like to point out at this time that this $5 multimeter is supposedly rated for 1,000 volts. Uh, uh huh. And we've got some uh, specs. Ooh, it includes a 9 volt battery. You gotta wonder how they can even include a 9 volt battery on something that costs this little. Oh, avoid working alone. That'll that'll come in handy when this thing kills you. And uh, yeah, we've got all the features. Never measure resistance on a circuit with voltage running through it. Okay, good to know. And uh, oh, apparently it does have a fuse. Well, anyway, let's uh, take a look at these lovely leads that come with it which I believe are made out of shredded newspapers painted uh, black and red and they have these ridiculously weird tiny um, banana plugs on them and well, it's moderately sharp and they are super tiny uh, for reference let me just grab my um, HP multimeter these are fluke leads but you get the idea of how tiny these things are and they just plug in here look they couldn't even bother coloring the common terminal black that's how ridiculous this is so yeah horrible horrible switch <laughs> and uh, yeah it does actually have transistor testing something that none of my uh, multimeters have, but I don't think it's very common on real multimeters. And you know, you've got your usual uh, ohms, volts, AC volts, whatnot. And yeah, I would not recommend plugging this into a wall outlet, but it does apparently go uh, up to a thousand volts. So yeah, I don't trust it. Now, don't get me wrong, I do believe that this thing will show somewhat accurate voltages and stuff like if you put in five volts I don't doubt that it will show five volts that's mostly because because the fact that it doesn't really have any digits to show any details but that being said um, this is not the sort of thing you ever want to use uh, mostly just for safety I mean you know will it show you the reading of a battery yes it will but would you want to use it for anything else? No, you probably wouldn't. Because anything else, one, you would want more, uh, you know, somewhat more reliable results than, you know, five ish volts. And two, you get to the point where you're now reading things that are potentially dangerous. And do you want this cheap ass thing blowing up in your face? Probably not. So, let me just take out these four screws. You can see the lovely colorful battery. Which is funny, because I don't think this... This has to be made in China. It has to be a Chinese company, but... Why can't they spell color properly? You would think that a, a battery made outside of the U.S. would have a U in it. But, hey, okay, whatever. Um... Last screw. This is a super, super tiny board. And is this is there another screw in here? Or is this just wedged in? I really don't care if this breaks, by the way. Oh, I see. The 
plastic has melted where they've put a huge blob of solder right here. Now what is this doing? Is this they joined these two boards? That is bizarre. Okay, so here's our stupid um, wheel or uh, dial. Wow, horrible, horrible. But these guys are really in there. I'm just gonna get something and just pry these things out because if you're under the impression that I'm gonna actually test this thing and bother figuring out how accurate it is, nah, no, not happening. So we've got a teeny tiny glass fuse in it, which is, yeah, the lighting's bad, I can't really see it. It's super thin, so it's gotta be like that, the uh, low current range. And we've got a terrible, terrible looking uh, shunt for the 10 amp range. I think this is 10 amp, is this 10 amp? I don't even remember now. Yep, 10 amp. So that is literally the 10 amp range. It's like that with a tap off it to read the uh, voltage across it. There's no protection whatsoever. And as you can see, this is actually a dual board and they've soldered across it. I don't even know why they bothered with that. I guess just because this divides evenly into a, um, a board. Oh wait, maybe. Yeah. There you go. See, that's how they're, another way they're getting it so cheap. They just incorporate this into it. Because there's no, there's no reason for this board to be cut out like that inside the case. See? There's nothing here. So obviously this, this piece of PCB is coming from here. And they just make this as a one rectangular module. So... One thing you're going to notice real fast on this is there is nothing on this thing. I mean, <laughs> except for this spring to connect to the quote-unquote shielding. Yeah, uh, you know, two square inches of tape. Um, you've got blobbed chip on board. A pot, which has a cutout for some reason. Oh, maybe it's for increased temperature stability so this thing can be super accurate. And... Um, medium sized cap, a couple passives <laughs> the, the uh, cheap ass uh, 9 volt battery clip has two holes for it drilled in the uh, PCB and then they're soldered in so that's nice, they're thinking of strain relief, you know that's, that's nice of them and we've got this little multi-way socket for the transistor tester and the uh, rotary dial contacts and that is it. Like, literally, that's the whole thing. There is nothing else in this thing. I'm surprised there's even a fuse. And this is the diode for the quote-unquote diode protection. There's, there's nothing in this. Like, this thing, if you hook this up to anything other than, like, 5 volts, you'll probably end up killing yourself. It is so unbelievably bad. Even this PCB is super thin. Do not buy these. I know they're only a couple dollars, but holy crap. Uh, you're definitely getting... Actually, you're getting more than what you pay for, I think. I think this is actually pretty impressive for uh, a couple bucks. But, jeez. Man, never, ever... Oh, there we go. Here's our nice LCD with the zebra strip. And, yeah. The sockets are just soldered, you know blindly into the board Ugh. wow that is just awful really 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 awful so that's enough of that crap let's get rid of all this garbage thank you Harbor Freight you know it's funny I'd never actually heard of Harbor Freight until I started watching AVE's videos and then uh, I end up buying this thing like a couple days after, and it's actually from Harbor Freight, or, well, distributed from them. That's funny. I went all that time without ever hearing about them. This is one that I got off Amazon when I first started doing electronics again. Uh, this is a pretty cheap one. This is like 20 bucks. I would say this is the bare minimum of what you would want for 
not um, you know you want to you don't want to measure mains voltage or anything on this although it is technically cat 2 rated so and they do actually have a UL listing and it's you know like this is the minimum of what I would say is probably what you you would want like I have measured mains voltages on this and I, that's about it I mean you know like I, I, in, a, in a short you know like oh crap is this amp getting power blah 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 yeah, I'll do it, but really, it's it's the bare minimum. But for twenty dollars or however much I pay, I think it's like fifteen or twenty bucks. I have to say this is not terrible, and it is what I would consider the bare minimum for if you're doing something like, uh, you know, building stuff on a breadboard. If you're you know working with like five volt stuff, and you know you don't need anything fancy, you don't need like millivolts or anything like that you just need some basic resistance measurement and basic voltage measurement this will actually work and I don't really I wouldn't say go out and buy one of these I would definitely recommend saving up a bit more and getting either um, you know one of the Dave Jones recommended fifty dollar meters or even you know like I paid fifty dollars for this guy and this guy works well but um, you know, if you're really desperate and you just do basic, basic stuff, this thing will work. And <laughs> there are a couple things that are wrong with it. For one, you've got your spring to connect to the shielding, which was obviously designed to go here. Instead, this is paper. And there's one teeny tiny piece of foil tape here. So that would be wrong. But it does have some stuff going for it. It actually uses double A's, which is always a good thing. I hate nine volt batteries. Um, the build quality is actually quite poor. <laughs> I mean, like here's the clock crystal, just like blindly soldered onto it. And you know, all these caps and everything are just like dangling here. Like they're really, really, you know, like, is that going to last? No. Um, but, you know, they at least put in like a mob and there's a fuse. I mean, the 10 amp range isn't fused, but, um, you know, it does have a, a you know, flame proof resistor. And there's a bunch of pots so you can adjust everything and quote unquote calibrate it. Um, yeah, and like, look at this. There's just another cap just dangling here. But that being said, I have used this thing quite a bit and it hasn't really given me any problems. I mean, it's not great it's very small uh, I am going to uh, take this to work and just leave it in my locker because at my work I, I work in an apartment building as a doorman uh, often people are finding me electronic stuff that people have tossed out so uh, it's always good to have a multimeter for that you know especially when they uh, when people throw out their UPS's it's good to know if the big lead acid batteries in them are still any good before I lug them home. So uh, that's always useful because I have a bunch of UPSs here and half of them are from work and they actually all work great. So um, yeah, this thing does actually work. You know, it does, uh, it works down to millivolts, I should mention. Uh, and it has a little, you know, stupid battery tester mode. And you know, it works. It's, it's not bad. I, 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 like I said, bare minimum, if you need the absolute just you know I need to know if there's power going through here this thing isn't bad this thing is crap complete crap I was uh, I, didn't, I know I didn't show any of it because I just wanted it gone but I did actually take measurements with it and it was like everything was just like <laughs> rounded up to the nearest volt it was so bad but uh, yeah you know, if you want to spend 50 bucks, try and score a real meter, like a real used meter for 50 bucks, and you will not go wrong. But, uh, I don't, I don't know where the, um, the leads are for this. I don't know if I still have them. I think I threw them out when I got, I have some Probe Master leads, and, uh, I keep getting ones that come with, like, my flute, my flute came with, uh, set of leads, so I just didn't need the, the crappy ones that came with this. They're much better than these. Don't get me wrong. They're not good, but they're, they're better than that. And, yeah, like, I mean, this thing is at least rated. Oh, and the uh, the stand actually works half decently. And the uh, the rotary dial is actually not terrible. It has a nice click to it. It's not, you know, 
the quality of a real multimeter. And you know, they have these stupid little clip holders or uh, probe holders on the side. Uh, yeah, you can get a whole bunch of different models on Amazon. I think they go up to like 50 bucks or something. It's made by Innova. And this is the 3320. And yeah, so it, it's not bad. You're probably better off just buying a used meter. Because for two of these pieces of crap, I got this. So, yeah. Whatever one you want, I'm just saying this is the better deal. You know, getting a used meter. Especially one like by HP or someone who is in the major, I mean, they're a major multimeter brand. But, you know, if you try and bid on a fluke, you're almost always going to lose. Because the flukes always go for a ton of money. This one, pretty good. And, you know, like I said, it was, I think I got like... It was like 45 bucks or something. I can't remember now.